Hi everyone, Lee Veras here bringing you another Phototech Tuesday. Today I'm going to look at in-camera multiple exposures with the Fujifilm X-T5 in Tuscany. The use of multiple exposures in travel photography allows for a new impressionistic immersion in a scene, opening up a whole new world of creative photography. This last May, during our photo adventure in Tuscany, we visited the Banff Winery on a private tour of the working facilities. This was a great opportunity to play with in-camera multiple exposures. The Banff Winery is located in the heart of the Val d'Orchia region in Tuscany, and it's the largest winery in the area. Banff is a very modern facility, and it's mostly famous for their Brunello uh, wine. And as you might expect, there are a lot of wine barrels of various sizes, as well as lots of industrial pipes, gauges, gleaming metal. This is great material for photography. Um, and besides capturing the usual documentary style shots, I wanted to let the scene speak to me emotionally. And I also wanted to react in the moment. So I initially experimented with an impressionistic approach, aiming for three exposures in additive blend mode basically replicating a traditional multiple exposure with film. Each exposure simply adds brightness to the previous exposures. Each exposure is visible, blending transparently with the other exposures, giving you a fairly busy image. This is good at creating a kind of pointillist impressionism. You still know what was captured, but it's rendered in a more abstract way. However, the real magic with current mirrorless digital cameras is the ability to use other blend modes. So let's uh, take a look at the Fujifilm X-T5 menu for multiple exposures. Once you turn it on, uh, you get to the multiple exposure control where you can select additive, average, light, or dark. We saw an example of additive already. Average blends successive exposures with a normal blend mode at 50%, averaging the exposures together such that each properly exposed capture maintains the average brightness instead of increasing it the way additive would do. Light compares the current exposure with the previous exposures and blends the lighter pixels, substituting lighter for darker areas. Dark is the opposite, substituting darker for lighter pixels. Let's take a look at the individual exposures here blended together with light blend mode. So these are the individual shots. And you can capture, each time you capture another image, you can see the previous capture transparently behind whatever you're pointing the camera at. And these individual exposures are saved to the camera card as RAW files with the final composite image delivered as a JPEG. This blend mode does not have transparent areas. Lighter things overprint darker things, resulting in a kind of cubist abstraction. Let's take a look at some more examples, again, with the light mode blending. The beauty of multiple exposures with mirrorless cameras is that you can see the preview with the previous exposure transparently overlaid with whatever you are currently looking at with a camera. And this instant preview allows you to compose successive shots effectively, even though you can't see the exact blend mode version until after you're done. With practice, you develop a sense of what works in a given blend mode. So these are all lightened mode, and you can kind of see if you study the image that lighter things are played over darker things. Here's one that uses dark blend mode, where the darker things overprint lighter things. As you work with this approach, you'll start to get a feel for the different strategies that work with different blend modes. The visual stimulation at the scene you are experiencing uh, affects your creative response as you are capturing images. It's much more fun and way more, way different than compositing images after the fact. Anyway, I always enjoy doing multiple exposures on all of our photo adventures. And, and here are our tours for 2024. So you can see uh, we're, we have a pretty full schedule. Uh, sign up for our email list to find out about the, the tours. And uh, you can grab a shot of the QR code here to sign up for our email list. 
and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Phototech Tuesday. Uh, you might be interested in more detailed information. Uh, you can go to my website and you might consider following me on YouTube and X, do they still call it Twitter, uh, to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video and make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so that you don't miss any posts in the future. Please consider following me on Instagram. I post three times a day. And I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle, as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at veris.com. Look under the education menu for online courses. There you can pick from 17 courses covering all aspects of post-production, workflow, retouching, and special effects, including my full course on the 10-channel workflow and my course on 21st century lighting techniques, lighting in layers in Photoshop. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Post any questions you might have and any suggestions for future posts in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next Phototech Tuesday.